Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is the gubbins out of an electric fireplace and I recovered it and saved it because inside it has this thing that it looks to me like a snail fan. Hard to see, but we'll get in there. I've already tried to plug it in and nothing happened. The elements get hot, but the fan doesn't spin. I don't want the elements, I just want the fan. So I'm gonna take it apart today and try and get the fan to work and take the element out or at least disconnect it. It has this extra cable and this went to a light bar, which looks like this. And all that did was turn on these LEDs, which are quite filthy, but they didn't all work. They didn't flash or, you know, flicker or anything like that. They just came on, which I thought was a bit bizarre, but there's the LEDs on their control board. I presume it's a low voltage output, but I don't know. So with this now, how do I get in here? I'm guessing that the stuff inside is anchored with these screws here. And that if I want to get in there, I'm going to have to take off the screws on the end. Possibly. I'm not sure, let's go for it. We're going to have to start somewhere. So the reason I collected this from the great big pile of rubbish in the sky is because I've got a solar inverter outside and Andy Reynolds, who knows a thing or two about solar panels, recommended to me that, uh, and recommends to everyone actually, in fact, on, on his channel, that putting a little blower, low, a low wattage blower underneath your inverter and having it time to come on when it's hot in the day and it's sunny. So you probably don't need it first thing in the morning, but as you go into the mid, mid sun, mid day sun, you need that extra bit of cooling. Yeah, you don't need it. The machine's rated to run without it, but it can't hurt. I think that's the that's the deal. Really, can't hurt it to have that extra bit of cooling. So a snail fan out of an oven or whatever is ideal. This happens to be an electric fire. It just is what it is. So that's the why. It looks dusty inside, as most fans circulate and recirculate air around houses tend to be. A couple of more screws. I think we're nearly there because of how it's bending. Uh, yeah, the elements work. The fan doesn't, and these fans are should be, should be quite easy to repair. on something. I don't know what that is. There it is, okay. It isn't plugged in, just just in case you're worried about me. So what's missing here? Should I unscrew this side as well? I'm guessing I should. The silver one's on earth and the rest is motor and element. So let's get them out. And it may be that I don't use this one, but I learn a thing or two about it. Or it may be that I use it in a different housing. Or I just use it in exactly the same housing and just have it wired so that I don't run the element because it would seem a bit pointless to be generating two and a half kilowatts of electricity and burning it straight away. Right. Here we are. So I can immediately disconnect this element, which I know I know works. And I have a notion in my head that I would like to make my own muffle furnace and that would be ideal. Oh, they're stiff. There we go. So the air gets sucked in by these fan blades that are caked in dust. Sucked in from here, blown out through here. Easy peasy, simple as that. These screws are very, very tight. So on the side of this thing with the blue wires going in here looks to be some kind of a thermal fuse or a thermal stat. I don't know which, could be either. Can't see it correctly, that's why I'm not specifying yet. Go. 
go. That comes off there. What are we down to now? Yeah, there's a couple of little things, if you can see, just in here. That looks like a thermal fuse, and that looks like a thermal stat. There's a bimetallic strip that will pop up and down. Right, let's disconnect that if we can. There's a little tab on it you have to push in. These are probably the same. You don't often see silicone protectors. There's that one's come off. The white, the white protectors on the ends there, the sleeves are silicone, I think. So I don't want that. I just want this. Let's try and run it like that, at the risk of putting dust everywhere. It's on, it's live. Very stiff. Switch it off. Let's try and get it out of there. It's plugged out again. So here's the fan. Oh, it's got an earth on it. Hmm. They don't like to make it easy, do they? So I disconnected the earth lead there, off camera. Just give this a wipe down. The damp cloth, and what I've noticed taking it apart is, you'll see now, it's not, it's not held correctly. See this? That shouldn't be loose. What's difficult about it is that the screw heads are in here and the nuts are on this end. One nut's missing, in fact. This nut can't be tightened. It has to be tightened from this side. You can't get access because it's crimped together. So that's a bit bizarre. Uh, I can't see. I wonder, could it be... I think it can be unlocked, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think it can be. So let's try and unlock it. I think it's got like a bayonet style fitting. Oh dear. You see, it goes from here over to here, but I can't tell if it's, it's not, it doesn't look welded. I think it's just crimped or held in place. Let's try. I don't want to bend the metal, you see, that's my issue. There we go. That's got it now. The fan is also there's a bearing on this end, so the fan blade now is. Oh, there we go. It just pulls out. Okay, let's give this a quick wipe. This could be a very simple fix. It doesn't look. Uh, I don't know if it. I can't tell if it needs oiling yet. It, it, um, it's so easy to take apart that it won't hurt to oil it. It's so easy to take apart that it won't hurt to oil it. There's a nut in there, there's no nut in here. So even if I get one side cinched up, it might be a start to getting it working. Yeah, that should just go now, I think. So the old death to fire washing machine cord with uh, no safety on it. So a cord that you can just plug in. Live and neutral. I don't think it matters which way around they go because it's a shaded pole induction motor and a mighty small one at that, 12 watts. Let's try that. It doesn't run away across the table. Hold it there. Yeah, it's just started up perfectly. The camera will struggle to pick that up, but... Excellent. That's cool. So I need a nut to go on here. Shouldn't be hard to find. Fang Zhan FJ48180 slash 4815A 503, 220 to 240 volts, 50 hertz, 12 watts. Very small. I think they're a relatively inefficient motor, but that doesn't matter because it just doesn't matter. <laughs> Does the job. Now, I would like to clean this out. I don't know if I can get this out. I presume I can actually, just looking at how that's come out there. 
It's a bearing in here, a bushing probably, in a rubber. Oh, there we go, okay. Very easy, <laughs> in fact. So I can give that a wipe. I can give this, I think this is gonna have to get a wash uh, under the tap. Because look, every, every blade has a load of stuff stuck on it. So I'll do that, I'll just immerse it and give it a scrub out with a bottle brush or something and uh, try and reassemble it. So I gave this a bath. These, of these blades, they got a bath too. And there's the motor. I had a look to try and find a nut. And well, the screw that's here is M4 metric, I think. And that's the nut that's on it. And that fits into this little housing like that, retainer. However, all my other M4 nuts are too big. So I looked through every box I had of little screws and little nuts and bolts. And you can see there, the one on the left is 7mm. And the one closest to the camera on the right now is six mil. So I think the only conclusion is to put it in the vise and take half a mil off each side with a file uh, in position like this, and then it should fit. Sometimes these things are just riveted shut. That'll go in there nicely now. Sometimes these things are just riveted shut so they can't be opened and repaired. But this is kind of good because I can get in and put a drop of oil in that bearing. So if tissue screwed up and a screwdriver should clean out anything that's in here. this black there straight away. So we're trying to get out. I suspect, because there was no nut in the machine, I suspect that the nut just had never been installed. And that that's what was going on. So then it fell apart when it got it fell apart once it started running. It looks like there's something stuck on the end of that there. Just dirt, in that case, actually. No. Let's clear out this side. This one's not blind, so we can get a bit of a wipe from each side. It doesn't look dirty. I've seen some that have been absolutely filthy. There. So the little bearing, this bronze bushing, is held in place within the aluminium or zinc housing with a spring clip, probably just steel. Bit of dirt there. Sometimes these things, yeah, I think there is a felt pad. You see the white in there, in there behind. I think that's a felt pad to take oil and hold it. Uh, so there's a good bit of oil there, probably, probably too much. Yeah, it looks like there's a felt pad there too, but that'll hold the oil and then it'll come through the bronze bushing. Now, I think 
I've forgotten which way around this went. And I think that's also critical because I think it depends on the direction of rotation, so I'll have to check that once I get it back together. Give the shaft a wipe. Okay, clean that off. Then this plate here goes on. And the screws go through through the nuts. That's the nut I've made or reduced in size. It's a bit homemade looking, but working is what we're after here. No one's ever, ever going to see this. Oops. No one's ever going to see this. Right, tight. Tight. Spinning freely. Lovely. Very nice. Now I took this little rubber bearing out of here, so it should just press back in. to work it around there we go that's it it's in I'm not sure that it's meant to have any kind of a there is something in there I think it's plastic though I don't know if it wants oil let's offer that up like that then this one This will slice my hand open if I'm not careful. Alright. And these go in like that. And it should just rotate around again. That's it. Snaps. Spins. It's centered quite. Let's put some power on it and see what happens. It doesn't matter which way around live and neutral go because it's AC, but I have a feeling it doesn't matter which way around this thing goes because which, which side of it's shaded as to which way it turns. I have a feeling that's what happens here, but I'm not sure. I'm just hoping that it'll blow air out the bottom when I turn it on. So let's go for it. And it does. The breeze blows out along the table. That's all there is to it. Very silent. Moving slowly away. Okay. So then, as it stands, I would need to protect that somehow. I could make a wooden box. What I'm thinking is that this, this box here is very big. Let's get these cables off here again. The box it came in is very big, but that's not a bad thing. So I'll get rid of this auxiliary cable that went off to a lighting unit. And I'll put the live into a switch. I've taken out two of the switches earlier on, but I'll put the live into one switch so I can reach. it and the neutral can go to the other unit on the neutral can go to the other unit on the motor I'm trying to make use and reuse of everything here rather than doing a spectacular wiring job which is just unnecessary see so if like you could make a nice housing out of wood but the reality is this will do. This is already made. It's already metal. It's already earthed. Now, how does this go back together? Like this, I believe. Like 
out with a couple of screws. So it's back together, all screwed back together and plugged in. It blows air out this direction. So if it was somehow mounted below and in front of the unit, it could blow this air up and over, like up this way. Uh, the screws are in the right position for that. And then it would draw air in from the front, and blow it out like that. I think that could do it. I've removed the other switches so they're handy, I keep them safe. And then I could just plug it through a timer plug or something like that. I'm pleased with how that's worked out. Uh, it wasn't very complicated apart from that one nut, which is kind of how things go. Questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later.